it is your buddy peace and harmony with you here today much love going out to all the beautiful empowered harmonizers and we're zooming in and focusing in today on a great viewer question and that is to really understand and dissect the grandiosity of the narcissist and how it relates to shaming others in relationship dynamics and before we get started i just want to give a huge shout out to those of you who have recently donated to the channel thank you so much it's an honor to be able to present this channel and discuss some very sensitive information as it applies to very confusing and bewildering and hurtful relationships and whoop whoop we have south carolina in the house it is a privilege to be able to host these sessions so thank you so much for your donations and your feedback so absolutely if you would like to give back to the channel and participate and we have been a source of positive influence for you or provided you some tools and a resource absolutely positively feel free to give here to the channel on the PayPal donate now button here on the home page of YouTube and it will definitely help to keep the lights on, keep me inspired, and it lets me know that we are really making an impact and a positive influence. So thank you so much for your feedback. And we're zooming in and focusing in today on a great viewer question, and that is to understand the grandiosity as it relates to shaming others. So when we look at the grandiosity of a narcissist, they're not seeing reality for it is. They are in a projection state. They are projecting out into others as well as their own world, their own professions, their own relationships, their own circumstance, where they quote unquote think they should be based on grandiose thinking, which means kind of overinflated, um, overreactive. Um, their standards from which they feel that they are entitled to is oftentimes in their mind's eye very different than the circumstance with which they have. So they're chronically undersatisfied. They're chronically complaining. They're chronic fault finders. They are the people who don't feel comfortable in usual committed relationships or positions. So these are the people who will lie pathologically. They'll put on a face, a poker face, a play face, whatever it is that they need to do to kind of get by and deceive others. But then meanwhile, lurking underneath the surface, their private self, they have all sorts of other discordant thoughts, feelings, behaviors, and choices which betray the outer persona, the outer relationship, the outer job profession. And so based on their entitlement, if it's in you know a professional setting, well, here I go, I should be above you. And you know, they have these feelings of superiority, which then you know propagates them to have these feelings based on their personality disorder and their entitlement, which means, well, because of this, because of where I was born, or because of this and this, you know, there's there's gonna be you know different explanations for that person you know, based on my skin color, based on my religion, based on my upbringing, based on my grandiosity, you know, I am born into superiority. And so therefore I should have ABC and have XYZ and it should just be flung open to me. And there's a sense of entitlement. There is a sense of grandiosity propelling this person's personality. So they basically will feel entitled to violate other people's boundaries and just sort of help themselves to whatever um, and then speak whatever to others which are shame based talking down to the repairman the waitress the clergyman um, the mailman whoever it is is fodder for fault finding and it is oftentimes this propensity of the narcissist to have to take up more space than the rest of us in the world. So these are the people who want to take up more space in conversations, more space on the floor. Their energy wants to have a bigger space, whether it's in companies or bands or whatever it is, that, you know, they want the bigger room, they want the bigger spotlight, they want the louder volume, they 
want to command attention. You're, you know, these are the soapbox fault finding people and they will, it is easier for them to promulgate or fluff out their ego and their entitlement, yet it's discordant with actual their skills, with actual their abilities. So they'll talk a big game, but their their skills aren't a match. So it's like the, the big hat, no cattle. You know, in other words, they haven't done the ranching. They haven't done the field work. They haven't actually grown, you know, to raise a herd. They haven't gone through what is required. They haven't gone out and mended a fence at four in the morning. They haven't had the humbleness and the security within to go out and then do the work, you know, to go and really work and do the required work. They just think that they're going to shoot up without having to explain or have, you know, the skills. So they just have this sense of um, entitlement. And so when others don't match their entitlement, in other words, when you hold them accountable, when you put them down to size, um, when you speak reality to them, when you speak your hurts, um, when you speak, you know, hey, you know, you're, fault, you're, you're, you're disrespectful here. Um, you are, you know, you're, you're not seeing really reality as it is. You're, you're not seeing the good, you know, you're projecting this negativity and then they're shaming others just out of this propensity or out of this tendency or trait within someone who has a superiority affect to them. So this, you know, it's, it's how they carry themselves. They're very arrogant. You know, you hear about the conceited people. Um, these people are typically not liked, but oftentimes people who don't know better will be a source of supply to these people and try to, you know, but it'll wear itself out. It'll get old very quickly. People will be able to see through it very quickly once you see how much they fault find and shame others. So it's a way for them to keep others from being able to call them out or hold them accountable for a sense of reality, particularly as it addresses their insecurity. So remember that the narcissist has on the outside their public self, their per persona, their facade, their mask, this promulgation of superiority, you know, I am so wealthy, I am born into this, you know, um, da, 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 da. So that is their sort of how they're operating. Um, but yet, then on the contradictory, that is their outside, but also they're doing, there's a cognitive dissonance that they create in others because they're stating that they're so great, this, that, and the other thing, but yet they're abusive to others, they're neglectful. They will shame others. They will belittle and condemn others. So they'll speak negatively about them. You know, the flaw finding as if it's funny, a very sardonic, dark humor. Um, and it's very, very kind of ugly. And so it's very interesting because once you really see that's the, the, the private self, in other words, what's really going on underneath the facade, they'll talk a big game, but underneath there is a profound sense of insecurity that they don't belong. So they have to overinflate in order to, you know, be, you know, the, the guy, the gal, the life of the party, whatever it is that they think that they have to be versus being their true authentic self. And oftentimes there's a lot of hurt there. Um, you know, they might have had a very, uh, troublesome or traumatic upbringing where they've seen a lot. And so they've had to adapt and adjust by, you know, puffing themselves out and then having, you know, the superficial things, which, you know, organize their personality. Um, you know, that in other words, that, that in, you know, internal self is not a match. So it's like, um, someone has said it's like perfuming a pig, you know, underneath there's a dirty, rotten scoundrel but yet, you know, they're perfuming it. Um, I guess that's the expression. Maybe you all have heard that, you know, um, and so, you know, it's, it's kind of like, you know, you can't perfume a pig, a pig is a pig or, you know, um, someone who has this disorder, I've heard them say, you know, you can't dress up S H I T, you know, in other words, what's underneath is eventually going to seep through. And then you'll find that through time, these people are going to experience a lot of relationship disorders. Um, when they're really, you know, when their true colors really shine through, they're not able to keep the long-term job. Um, they're not able to keep the long-term relationships. They're not able to keep the long-term obligations that a person of character or humbleness 
will be able to, you know, you know, there's, uh, you know, because they need so much room, it's always about them. And then they're the, they're the, they're, they're the finger pointers, you know, you know, every honest intention that you have is twisted and turned to be some sort of flaw, flaw or deficit or imperfection in you. So you might be wanting a real relationship, marriage, honesty, loyalty, talk about, you know, having a heart to heart and they'll tell you, you just want to own me. You know, you're just so possessive. You know, you just want someone to take care of you and they'll be twisting and contorting. And so there's a, a complete cognitive dissonance. There's a disconnect in the relationship. And then you're like, I don't want to possess everything. I, you know, this is, I want to have a heart to heart. I want to put it out on the table and just have a, heart, a normal conversation. Oh, well, you know, you just want too much. You know, I have to do this or I have to do that or I can't, you know, commit to this part of the relationship until I, you know, until I, I have my CD out or my book written, you know, and they have all these excuses of why their needs are so more important than a relationship. But in the, in the meanwhile, you know, they're making these excuses, you know, I can't have a relationship and have kids until, you know, I, I own this company or I own this money and they keep pushing people away. So they keep pushing the real, true, loving, authentic people who actually care about them, who are actually good for them and beneficial, oftentimes very empathic and sensitive and would, you know, love, quote unquote, to take care of them and give to them and have a soft spot for them and, and love them through and through. But yet they're going to push these people away. You know, you're too possessive. Um, you know, you want to control me. You know, um, I, I have to, you know, this is my goal. This is, you know, this is me, you know, and then they'll be very defensive on this versus, you know, sort of hearing you out and listening to you and knowing that you actually, you know, you're coming from a real space and, but they're projecting this shame onto you. So these people are the projectors of the personality spectrum. So they will project, meaning they'll put their insecurities on you. It's like a, a scapegoat. They'll literally, if you could think of their insecurities like a tattered blanket, they're going to place that tattered blanket on you and go, look how tattered you are. Look how worn out you are. Look how, you know, worthless you are. You don't keep me warm. You just da, 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 da. You know, you're so this, you're so that. And so it's the finger pointing, yet they really have four fingers pointing back at them when they're making these promulgations or these projections of shame. And so they're not able to see the good around them. They're literally not able to perceive it because of this insecurity. And the narcissist, you know, basically to dim, uh, you know, to brighten their own light, they will dim that of others. So in other words, they will shame and debase others, you know, make them seem that they're inferior, arrogant, you know, and even if they don't have a lot, so even if they are, you know, um, they don't have the money, they don't have the talent, they don't have the career, um, you know, there's something um, hurtful lurking underneath, but they'll act a big game. They'll act as if. So they're putting on a show to get and take what they want. So they are the ultimate takers. And so they will also exploit and violate people, rules, regulations based on this entitlement. Well, I'm entitled to talk to people this way. I'm entitled to treat people this way. I'm entitled to use people. Um, I'm entitled to play people. Yet, you know, when you're, you know, then they make victims out of people. And, you know, people ba basically get sick and tired of being victimized and they see things very clearly. So they try to hold these people accountable. And these are the people who will then shame you and blame you anytime you try to speak a basic a basic word, you know, a basic, you know, this hurts me. This is not fair. Um, you know, it's not fair that, you know, you ignore me at this time. Um, it really hurts when you just sort of leave and don't communicate with me. Um, it really hurts when, you know, you're, you're not open to doing these and these behaviors. It opens me, you know, it hurts me that there's such a distance here. Um, and so, you know, this basic communication, which all couples, families, organizations need to have that two way discussion and communication. That's what communication is. It's hearing and receiving and, you know, being able to have a, a basic communication of basic terms, um, basic feelings. And so 
that is how they will then project because it keeps them insulated. You know, if they can shame others, it keeps them insulated. So it's easier for them to point out the flaws of others than address the flaws within themselves. You know, you're right. You know, this is arrogant. You know, you're right. This is conceited. You're right. I am um, acting out of uh, entitlement. You know, I, you know, you're right. I am you know, this is gone too far. Um, I shouldn't treat women this way. Um, I shouldn't treat men this way. I shouldn't talk like this way about other people. I should not point out flies about you and never have that within myself. So it's a very unfair playing ground with these people. But they're not going to ever, you, you know, you're, you're not going to hear this from these people. These people are the last people to admit any sort of imperfection about themselves. They they don't ever see it. They don't want to see it. They it in fact something usually that has happened earlier that has caused such a profound deep hurt that they have to overreact and over insulate it and overcompensate for the hurt. So in other words, um the fact that their parents um were in a very unhealthy relationship early in their formative years between zero and five. Their parents might have been cheaters, swingers, alcoholics, drug addicts, um, abandon them, not be there, you know, emotionally, but be there only physically, um, you know, provided a lot of money, finances for them and gave them all the creature comforts, but never the love, never the eye contact, never, you know, the coddling, the nurturing, the attention, yet they had the, all these other things. So they built up a sense of superiority, grandiosity, entitlement. Um, this superiority complex, and yet there was no heart, there was no soul, there was no intimacy, and it, they came from a broken home. And so it can, you know, the source can be a lot of these. So there is a source in this personality disorder. So this is what can create um, a lot of the, um, the, the shame dynamics and the projection of others and, be, and make it very difficult for them to hold healthy, functional, two-way honest and open relationships with others. They're usually going to have relationships that are based on the sense of superiority and puffing up the game and you know and the, it's always a game with them. It's always you know look at me, look at us, we're the SHIT. It's never casual, relaxed, open based on equality and based on non-judgment. So these people you always have to impress. They're always trying to impress etc. This is your buddy uh, peace and harmony with you here today, and I hope that these videos do help. Please share and please subscribe for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support.